Yeah, so interestingly, it's a little different every time in my, my process for me that goes forward. Normally I read like a game design document or I have a build from the developer and or there's art assets and I look through those things to gain inspiration to get a feel from it and then references start coming towards me from games that I played in my childhood or my adolescence or as an adult and all those things. So I take those ideas and those references and then I try to conflate them and maybe sit down for at the workstation and try to make crank out some ideas and usually if it comes really full like full-fledged I will just push it all the way forward and just send like almost two to three minute thing maybe in like a couple hours maybe a day mm -hmm. or a day or two and just to give them the concept and then they'll give me feedback back or if it's good then it's approved and I move forward and the thing about it is you either come into having to try to make a loop for the developer you have a file format system that you have to abide by in terms of it being for WAVE or OGG, which in relation to records, I don't think, at least to my knowledge, that people are still doing printing on OGG files. You still need like the master WAVE file, right, in, right. in that regard. So that's a little bit different. Also, like for records, you're not going to hear, you might not hear the loop over like 20 minutes long in terms of a record. You're just going to hear it like in one linear fashion as if like here's the three minute track, two minutes and 39 seconds for another, one minute 32 for this one. So it's in that form that an album would be, but for looping, it has to be for the player to be cognizant or subconsciously playing with the music behind them to not even notice what's going on. Right. So it's a different approach in terms of like of releasing an album and having like game loops of that nature. Also what I found out recently in my last project that I did, which was for Visual Novel Call Reality, I thought that you had to really master the actual game loop tracks, but I was assisting like someone from that used to work at Neversoft, like a friend of mine, he was saying he was like, no, normally like you can give him like the best mix you can for the game loop there because it's gonna have it's gonna be turned down anyway and you can just like ship that off. You don't have to do a master, it's not necessary. Uh -huh. So as opposed to like when an album you have to it has to go to a master engineer or yeah. else you're gonna be kind of be getting subpar mixes in that regard at least commercially. Yeah. So why would the why would the music not require to be uh, mastered when you uh, when you send it in? Are you just sending in stems or um, like as far as uh, the way it loops? Is that something that you have to keep in mind like when you're submitting music? I guess what I'm think, thinking of is like the final mastering process yeah. in terms of like you're going to the mastering engineer is not necessarily for the bells and whistles that normally come into play. Right. It's yeah. optional though. It's not saying like this is the hard set rule that yeah. goes on in the game design world. No, like it just depends on I guess the developer that you're working with, the budget in case mm. they can't afford a mastering engineer right. and all that stuff. So that's really like mostly the reason why. Gotcha. And Repetition is also part of music and video games. How do you keep a song sounding fresh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. I'm actually working through that process and I tried an experiment recently with this project that I'm on now. Uh, the way that I found that it works is using different, not being lazy, I'm just going to be straight up with you. And what I mean by that is if there are little ideas that you think are going to work in terms of like automation, if it's going to be different rhythm, if it's different rhythm styles that you're doing, if you're a 4-4, then switch it up, switch up the time signature, switch up your, your rhythmic patterns on maybe instead of it being the first and second, then it would be the second and third, and then switch it up to be like just like one, two, and then a break. So every time that you're doing something a little bit different, you can do modulation, you can do, that was the last thing that I tried. The most interesting thing is some, a technique called through composing. Mm -hmm. And what that means is just, most people will just like noodle out a ton of ideas, right? And they'll chop them up to try to make it truncated. Yeah. I found that actually like through doing that, it's you're just going everywhere, mm -hmm. but you're not necessarily conformed in a form. So you're not in an ABA form, you're not in a ternary form, you're yeah. just through composing. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F. Now you look at it, it's four to six minutes long, and now the player doesn't realize that that thing, even though it will loop eventually, that you are not paying attention to all the nuances in that style so that they will just, just play and they won't really notice. They don't get tired of the music. Mm -hmm. So I did this, I made like a four minute loop doing all those things I just mentioned. Yeah. And I didn't make, I think we launched a prototype in, I guess for October. And I didn't make music till January of this year. 
and the players really did know because they actually praised me on it. It was like, this is really great. I played this game for hours and <laughs> they did not get tired of it, most of the players. And I think we had like, I think we have up to over a million plays with that game right now. So. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I figured it out <laughs> for me. You cracked the code. <laughs> <laughs> it works, so I'm going to continue to go that forward. That's awesome. And uh, what's, uh, what's a project that you say is your, your favorite to have worked on? I would have to say my favorite project is Super Happy Fun Block. It was mm -hmm. a little mobile game that was released in 2013 uh, by Molten Tomato. And it's about this little ball that can change colors in the world. It's, a, it's like a little side scrolling puzzle game. And I pitched for the game and did like the audio demo the music, I sent it off to them. And that was like a really cool experience that allowed me to expand my palette in terms of musically, in terms of my DAW, which I use in Cubase, yeah. and to also write in happier themes. Because normally I write in dark themes, and I had to be happy to write the music. Otherwise, <laughs> Super Happy Fun Block would be a sad fun, super sad fun block, <laughs> right? right? So it wouldn't really work. Yeah. And I found that a lot of people actually really do enjoy that. Mm -hmm. and, um, I was very fortunate to be a part of that small team. I was very thankful. Yeah, I think that's that's one of my favorites. That's great. And when, and when you're composing, you say that Cubase is your go-to DAW. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your go-to synths or like uh, any, any instruments or effects that you just can't live without? Yeah, the, um, really unconventional in that type. When I, because most people like. I think you had mentioned like before, like Serum and yeah. stuff like that. Like I don't use, I mean I have contact, but I don't buy like the normal contact libraries. Like I don't have Omnisphere. Mm -hmm. I don't have Trillium. I just have, I look for very obscure synth patches like that, or contact patches yeah. that are maybe by smaller developers and mm -hmm. software engineers. And I go for those. So those would be, I mean, everyone kind of knows Silent now, but when I was in school, nobody was kind of using that. Yeah. So, and then I went back, I got Crystal X, uh, and there's, a, I still use Vanguard mm -hmm. VFX. Um, I use Nexus. I use, now I have some different, I use Panzer Tank, which has actually turned out really well. That's like an FM synthesis type of thing. Yeah. My favorite one, though, is Spire right now. And I don't see anyone using that. Spire and Helm are my top two that I'm using right now. Nice. And I'm working on possibly actually getting some obscure like physical scents that are made by like other engineers in Europe or something that I like to like even bring in some more analog type of sound. Great. Like, so you're gonna go on board with it. Yeah, I because it, again that's expanding my sound outside of the box mm -hmm. and it also you know, helps me compete a little bit better within the world that I'm you know, like trying to be along with all these other great musicians and composers of that nature and I can do sound design and all the really nuanced things that you, not everybody's going to really get a handle of, right? Right. So it sets you, it sets me apart just a little bit more. Yeah. And like for effects, I love the Howl stuff. I love their, their work. I love this free key thing that I found, like I think it's called like Sonic Q. Yep. I, I love wave arts. I, that's something actually I can't live without. Yeah. I, I don't use waves, mm -hmm. but I love wave arts. Yes. <laughs> so those are those are just a few of the things that I, I off the top of my head that I can think of. That's great. And uh, where can we find your work online? You can find my work at chasebethia.com, and you can also find my work at soundcloud.com forward slash chase dash bethia dash one. And, Excellent. But my website will have all the buttons and things on there. Bandcamp, I'm on Google Play, I'm on Amazon, Apple Music, Deezer, Spotify, I'm on all the major stuff. And I think I'm working on being on Tidal as well. So. Nice. And uh, what's a word of advice that you'd like to share with people who might be interested in following in your footsteps and working in music and the gaming industry? Do it because you love it and do it if you're really, really passionate about it, play games. And, you know, there's film composers out there, they, they watch film. Hopefully they do at least, but play the game, get it, get inspired, play more games, like play mobile games, play board games, play, you know, even if it's not your thing, how to make, maybe, sorry, but force yourself to kind of get acclimated so that you can write better and go out and experience, the, also maybe to have experiences, get outside of your room, be social, those things all count, those things all matter. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Be sure to check out Chase's work on all of those platforms he mentioned and check out uh, chasebethia.com.